ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Texas Panhandle High School Sports Awards. Brought to you by the Amarillo Globe News. In partnership with Happy State Bank, United Supermarkets, and Amarillo Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Talent will always be found. It doesn't matter where you play uh, or, or where you're from. Uh, when you have talent, people will find you. Some of the biggest names in the world of sports come together to honor the best high school athletes in the country. Alex Morgan, Katie Ledecky, Aaron Rodgers, Sue Bird, Shaquille O'Neal. Now do you know my name? Yeah, you know, well, you know, do you know my name? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Fire, fire, fury, fury, power, power. My name is, my name is, uh, legend. It's a celebration of athletic excellence from those who know it best. Here are your hosts, Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Desmond Howard and the host of NFL Live and SEC Nation, Laura Rutledge. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the show. Tonight we get to celebrate one of the most passionate and exciting groups in all of sports, the high school athlete. That's right, Laura. An incredible list of all-star talent has signed on to help recognize these amazing men and women. We're talking Aaron Rodgers, Alex Morgan, Chipper Jones, Sue Bird, Katie Ledecky, and the big man himself, Shaquille O'Deal. <laughs> I love it. You know, I actually think it's illegal these days to have a sports award without Shaq in it. I think you're right. So I'm glad he's on board for our show tonight. Of course, and the Diesel has something in common with everyone else on this show. At one point or another, we all went to high school. True, and while the time since high school has been a while, uh, for some more than others, <laughs> we all still remember the hopes and dreams and even the challenges of that memorable time in our lives. And tonight we all return to high school to cover a lot of sports and give out a lot of awards. If two people showed up to cheer for it and those two people were your parents, we're celebrating it tonight. So ditch the backpacks and summer reading lists and forget about that pop quiz you bombed in third period French last <laughs> semester. It's time to celebrate some of the best high school athletes in the area. Of course, none of this will be possible without the generous support of our sponsors. And you can't have a celebration this big without a little flexing going on. That's why we have sports broadcaster Abby Labar keeping an eye on the land of the humble brag. Thanks, Laura. And speaking of bragging, we know you love to, and we love to see it. So tag us in your social posts, share photos and videos from your own celebrations using tonight's hashtag. Posts on Instagram or Twitter will be shown on the social media feed on the show website. Okay, so we know every award show needs a red carpet. And lucky for us, two former college football players agreed to host ours tonight. If you don't know them as football players, well, you probably know them better from another little gig they had. The Bachelorette and The Bachelor, my friends, Tyler Cameron and Matt James. Thanks, Abby. Matt and I are so excited to be here. We got out, got dressed up, and stepped into our freshest kicks to walk the red carpet. Wait, are those my shoes? Bro, you put them in my closet. I'm wearing them now. Tonight we get a chance to salute some show out high school athletes. So who's handing out the roses? I'm in the awards tonight. Mm. Careful now. We talked about this and we let that go. We were playing sports long before our bachelor days, so we know how exciting this must be for you. But tonight's not about us. It's about the athletes of today, the records they're breaking, the bars they're raising, and the names we'll be reading and remembering in the future. So whether or not you win tonight, just know you've already proven to be a top athlete. So congratulations, this red carpet is all for you. Thanks guys. I don't know about you, Desmond, but I'm ready to start giving these kids some of their hard earned awards. Hey, let's do it. We're gonna kick things off in the pool. Here to help us dive right in is one of the most decorated female swimmers in US history, the legendary Katie Ledecky. 
Katie Ledecky burst on the competitive swimming scene at 15 years old. At the London Olympics, she took home the gold and the first of many Olympic medals. She's added four more golds, 15 world championships, two NCAA titles, and a whole bunch of freestyle world records. The recent Stanford grad is back in the pool, training for Tokyo. Hey everybody, Katie Ledecky talking to all you swimmers and divers out there. I know a lot of the world puts us all together in one big group because we spend half of our time in the pool and the other half of the time trying to get chlorine out of our hair. But we are a very diverse group. Divers launch themselves off of boards and platforms of varying heights, and swimmers employ a bunch of different strokes and distances, each with its own unique demands. That's why I'm here so I can speak to all of you individuals and tell you the key to success in your water world is to always, always, always keep moving forward. Except, of course, anyone who competes in backstroke or performs back dives. That advice would be very bad for you. You guys keep going backward. That sounded weird. I'm gonna go back in the pool. I'll leave all you divers to your diving and your backstrokers to your backstroking. I'll see you later. And the finalists for the Female Swimmer of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year is Kimberly Rodriguez of Palo Duro High School. Kimberly Rodriguez enjoyed a record-breaking season for Palo Duro and is this year's Texas Panhandle Girls Swimmer of the Year. The senior shattered a 42-year-old school record this past season winning the 100 meter backstroke. In her final race as a high schooler, Rodriguez also clocked the time of one minute, 26 seconds in the 100 meter backstroke at the district meet. Congratulations, Kimberly. And the finalists for the male swimmer of the year. And the Texas Panhandle male swimming and diving athlete of the year is Tanner McDaniel of Ascension Academy. Tanner McDaniel's continued excellence and consistency as a competitive swimmer makes him this year's Texas Panhandle Swimmer of the Year. The senior standout captured first place in the 100 meter backstroke at the Amarillo Swim Meet and was the fastest swimmer from his area at the Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools Championships, earning seventh place. Congratulations, Tanner. If you had to name the sport that most pro athletes choose to play when they're not at their paying gig, it would have to be golf. It doesn't mean they're good at it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're as bad as Charles Barkley either. But we decided to tap someone who makes their living driving for show and putting for dough. Here's Ryan Palmer with the Golf Awards. Four-time champion Ryan Palmer is no stranger to success. On the PGA Tour, where every week is a battle of attrition, he's taken home four tour victories, 11 runners up, 67 top 10 finishes, including two in the majors. Hey, all you golfers out there. PGA Tour winner Ryan Palmer here to hand out the golf awards. But before I do, I want to point out something about golf compared to other sports. Listen, I get it. There's no buzzer to beating golf. No one is throwing the ball 100 miles an hour at you, and no one is going to smash into you at the top of your swing and throw you to the ground. That's all true, but there's something awesome about golf that you can't find in a lot of other sports. If you've got a couple of hours to spare, you can play on the same courses that Tiger, Phil, myself, Annika and Envy, or even Rory and DJ play on. Try shooting hoops with your friends at Madison Square Garden. Or play nine innings at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. Let's hear it for the game of golf, where legendary venues are open to all. Here are your finalists for the Female Golfer of the Year. And a Texas Panhandle Female Golfer of the Year is Kiana Matthews of Memphis High School. 
Kiona Matthews is the Panhandle Girls Golfer of the Year after an impressive season. Matthews led Memphis to the region crown, winning Region 1-2A. At the Class 2A state tournament, Memphis finished in fourth place and was paced both days by Matthews. Congratulations, Kiana. Here are your finalists for the Male Golfer of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Male Golf of the Year is Peyton Mask of Canyon High School. Peyton Mask did his all to lead his team. He tied for 12th at the Class 4A state tournament with a two-day score of 114. The state tournament was cut short due to weather, but Mask's performance helped the Eagles finish third. In the regional tournament, Mask led the Eagles with a day two score of 149. The score paced the team and earned them a second place finish in the region. Congratulations, Peyton. Carrie Walsh Jennings here. Stick around, volleyball's coming up soon. For more than 60 years, United has called West Texas home. It's from here that we operate 94 stores across the region. Look, and you'll see United employees all around you, supporting other local businesses, your businesses, and giving their time and energy to help our efforts to make this the best place to live and work. We are West Texas, and West Texas is united. A lot of sports have similar concepts and equipment, boundaries, balls, and scoreboards, name a few. But there are two that make use of sand. One is golf, where it's to be avoided, and the other is beach volleyball, where it's embraced in all its gritty glory. Here to lend a hand with our volleyball awards is someone who knows achieving greatness is no day at the beach, Carrie Walsh Jennings. Carrie Walsh Jennings, also known as Six Feet of Sunshine, is covered in Olympic gold. The 42-year-old SoCal standout is the most decorated beach volleyball player in Olympic history. She and her former teammate, Misty May Trainer won three gold medals and five world championships, earning the title, the greatest beach volleyball team of all time. Hey everybody, Carrie Walsh Jennings here. I know this looks like a volleyball, but in reality, it's a ticket to your future. Because the lessons you learn hitting this sucker around will come in handy down the road. Things like teamwork, determination, goal setting. You're going to need all of those skills. And then, there are the friends you make with this. Ones you'll have for the rest of your life. Priceless. So don't think of it as just a volleyball. Think of it as your secret weapon for success. Here are your honorees for the Female Volleyball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Texas Panhandle Female Volleyball Player of the Year is Kinley Rudder of Bushland High School. Kinley Ruder is this year's Texas Panhandle Volleyball Player of the Year. The senior outside hitter helped Rushland to a 32-2 record while racking up 439 kills, 178 digs, and 52 aces while earning Class 3A State Tournament MVP honors. Ruder will continue her volleyball career at West Texas A&M beginning this fall. Congratulations, Kinley. There are some athletes today who have been so dominant, you only have to say their first name for everyone to know who you're talking about. They become celebrities, giants of their sport. That's right. Our next presenter was an athlete like that during her long career. She made her mark as a teenager, practically ruled at Wimbledon, and was still taking home major titles at the age of 49. The name Navratilova will be in the record books for years to come, but for so many of us, all you have to say is Martina. Martina Navratilova is one of the most dominant players to ever swing a racket. Born in the former Czechoslovakia, the former world number one, 
claimed 18 Grand Slam singles titles, added to her 31 doubles and 10 mixed doubles, 59 major titles are the most by any player, male or female, in the Open era. Hey everybody, Martina Navratilova here to tell you that you picked a great sport to play in high school because it's a sport that you can play your whole life. I mean, look at me. I'm still out there on the court all the time playing for hours and I'm like uh, 60, <laughs> never mind. You know, you can see by my hair how old I am. My hair is thinning, but anyway, I don't know why I did that. Um, because you guys can just Google my name and kind of figure out how old I am and then Instagram me about it, whatever. Um, anyway, all the effort that you are putting in now, it can pay dividends well past your competitive playing days. Remember, you can love other sports, but tennis is the only sport where love is literally part of the game. And here are your finalists for the Female Tennis Player of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Female Tennis Players of the Year are Kelsey Brought and Aubrey Thomas of Canyon High School. The Canyon senior Kelsey Brought fought hard every time she took the court and finished her high school career as the UIL 4A state runner-up in the girls' doubles division. Aubrey Thomas served as the second part of the UIL 4A girls' doubles state runner-up team alongside Brought. The senior played with intensity and heart, finishing her high school career on a high note. Congratulations, Kelsey and Aubrey. And here are your finalists for the Male Tennis Player of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Male Tennis Player of the Year is Bryce Ware of Canyon High School. Canyon senior Bryce Ware won the UIL 4A Boys Single State Championship. Ware did not drop a set at the state tournament on his way to clinching the first singles championship for Canyon since 1993. It was Ware's second state championship after winning the boys' doubles title two years ago. Congratulations, Bryce. Bruce Springsteen once topped the charts with his iconic album, Born to Run. But for this ultra marathon man, those aren't words that you sing. Those are words you live by. Presenting the awards for cross country, Dean Carnazes. Dean Carnazes, the legendary Badwater Ultra Marathon champion, running 135 miles through Death Valley in 124 degree heat. He later ran a marathon at the South Pole. This superhuman and best selling author has run 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. Hey guys, Dean Carnass is here to talk a little cross country, but first, a quick confession. I only ran cross country as a freshman in high school. Our team won the state championships and I figured that I couldn't top that, so I stopped running. Until later in life. Now I've raced and competed on all seven continents. But enough about me, this is about you guys, the best cross country runners from across the country. Here are the honorees for the female cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are... And the Texas Panhandle Female Cross Country Runner of the Year is Kyla Kane of Wellington High School. Still only a junior, Kayla Kane won her second individual state title in three seasons and is the Texas Panhandle Girls Cross Country Runner of the Year. The Wellington standout broke the tape at the Class 2A meet nearly 14 seconds faster than her next closest competitor. Kane also claimed victories at the regional and district meets, as well as the Tuscosa Rebel Run this past fall. Congratulations, Kyla. Here are the honorees for the male cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are
And the Texas Panhandle Male Cross Country Runner of the Year is Samuel Ashley of Canyon High School. Samuel Ashley is the Texas Panhandle Boys Cross Country Runner of the Year after an impressive showing at the state meet, as well as a senior year that featured multiple first place finishes. The Canyon senior was the area's top finisher at the Class 4A state meet. He also broke the tape at the district meet and earned victories at four other meets during the 2020 season. Congratulations, Samuel. Went for a um, onside kick, landed on my knee pretty hard and ended up fracturing my femur. I ended up having to go back and have surgery. <laughs> Even the day after I had surgery, I was back in the clinic here. It's nice to have people help me rehab at a caliber of what I'm used to feeling like I can do. One thing that I really liked was having the access to the turf, because that's what I'm used to playing on. Now, I mean, it feels like nothing had ever happened. You have a choice of where you can go. This is one of the best places in Amarillo. We have loved seeing how you are celebrating. Thank you for posting and letting us celebrate with you. Keep posting on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtags for a chance to win an autographed gift from one of our featured guests tonight. Now let's hear from some honorees with our friends, Matt and Tyler. Thanks, Abby. One thing you could say about us athletes is some of us tend to be a little superstitious. Some eat the same thing before every game. Some listen to the same music. Some people even wear the same sock for every game for years. Really? Bro, the Dude. Sam's Club socks? Come on, the bro. The thick cotton ones? I know, but we had socks from our school. And you wouldn't like wear them. You would stink up the whole place because you wouldn't even wash them. You'd forget to wash them. You still do the same thing in my apartment. In any case, we want to hear from some of the greats. Let's see what they've done to lock in the wins. I, I think I used to have like a ton of rituals. Well, I'm a pitcher, and so we're kind of known for um, being a little different. <laughs> I had my special hair ties. I would have to shower before every competition. I've always had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before I played. Um, I pretty much just put on my right sock before my left sock, my left shoe before my right shoe. I never touched the lines. I always warmed up 27 minutes before game time. But my one, I guess, like pregame ritual would be that I always pass with one particular teammate, Lauren Moyer. I didn't have any rituals or lucky anything, and I tried to stay away from those things because luck scares me. There are some things in certain playlists that might last an entire season or might, uh, you might listen to a certain playlist that you made and lose or have a bad game and that thing gets, uh, gets erased pretty quickly. I do do three claps on the blocks typically before I, I start my race. Like if I do something before a workout, before a competition and I notice that I had a good day, I now have to do said thing until the meet is done. I mean, obviously all ritual is a mental thing, but they were a big part of my preparation. Kind of like Dumbo's feather, like you don't need, it, need the feather to fly. You have it within you. 30 minutes before game time, um, eight, yeah, it's embarrassing. Four chocolate chip cookies and an orange Powerade. Well, that certainly was <laughs> educational. Whatever it takes, right? Yeah. What about you, Desmond? I would think a Heisman Trophy winner would have some good pregame rituals. Did you do anything? Yeah, you know, it's pretty silly and goofy, but I used to put everything on in the same particular order. No matter if we're home or away, like the right sock and the left sock, you know, it's just, I know it's ridiculous. I do it now, even when I put on my suit. So, you, put so my... you put your suit on in that particular order that you used to put your uniform on today? That's what you did? Absolutely. Well, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right, that was very good. So moving on, let's get to our next set of awards. Over the course of the past year, we've recognized a male and female athlete each week for their outstanding performance in their sport. From those selections, a Happy State Bank Athlete of the Month is chosen. We are honored to highlight these athletes as part of the High School Sports Awards program. Major Everhart of Tuscotia High School, Kinley Ruder of Bushland High School, Kyla Kane of Wellington High School, Hayes Huffstetter of Canadian High School, Kanan Thomas of Randall High School, Presley A.G. of Farewell High School, Brendan Housen of Amarillo High School, Mason Jones of Panhandle High School, Coleman Junal of Bushland High School, Kennedy Winfrey of Canyon High School, Branson Bitten of Randall High School, Saisley Carlton of Amarillo High School, J.C. Adams of Bushland High School, Tristan Curlis of Amarillo High School, when you're on the track, you know records are made to be broken. And legends can be made in a fraction of a second. 
That's why you always have to come with your best. You never know when it's your time to make your mark and when the world is watching. And the world definitely watched our next presenter. He remains the only man to win gold in the 200 and 400 at the same Olympics. The one and only legendary sprinter, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, this Texan dominated sprinting for most of the 90s. Of his 16 major international medals, not a single one isn't gold. After becoming the first and only man to defend an Olympic 400 meter title in Sydney, and to this day, the US records in the 200, 300, and 400 meters still bear his name. Hey everybody, Michael Johnson here to help celebrate the amazing achievements of the athletes from the friendliest sport there is, track and field. I know all those other sports will be mad that I said that, but think about it. When most sports have teams come together to compete, they call it a game. Some call it a match. But when we compete, where do we do it? At a meet. You can't get much more friendly than a meet as far as competition goes. And your finalists for the female track and field athlete of the year are, And the Texas Panhandle Female Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Macklin Land of Panhandle High School. Land helped Panhandle secure the program's first Team Class 2A state title in history at state. Individually, the junior defended her 400-meter title from 2019 by clicking in at 56.01 seconds. She was also part of the 400 and 1600-meter relays, which nabbed gold. Congratulations, Macklin. And now for the guys' side. And the finalists are... And the Texas Panhandle Male Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Heston Marshall of Wheeler High School. Marshall ensured his time at the state meet was memorable and came away with his first career gold in the 400 with a personal best time of 48.84 seconds and took home silver in the 200. Congratulations, Heston. It is called the beautiful game. And with three and a half billion soccer fans, that's right, billion with a B, <laughs> around the world, I think you have a hard time arguing with that description. Just like no one can argue that Alex Morgan is one of the most accomplished players, man or woman, in the history of the U.S. national team, and the perfect choice to present our soccer award. When Alex Morgan steps on the pitch, it is game on. With a knack for late game heroics, Morgan's goal and extra time in the semifinals of the London Olympics helped propel the U.S. to gold. She would go on to win the World Cup in 2014 and 19. Hey everybody, Alex Morgan here. I've been so fortunate with all the things I've been able to do thanks to soccer. And you might be looking wide-eyed at that list of accomplishments, so it might surprise you to know that in this interaction we are having right now, I'm the envious one. I'm not kidding, because you guys are in or just finished high school, and I absolutely loved my time in high school. It was down by high school in Southern California. Go Brahmas! Our colors were purple and gold, and our cheer was loud and proud. Yeah, that stuff stays with you. I'm envious because high school is special. You guys have your whole life ahead of you, which is scary, but also really exciting at the same time. So congrats on all your accolades and just try to really enjoy the ride. Your older self will thank you, trust me. And your finalists for the Female Soccer Player of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Female Soccer Player of the Year is Lily Sobe. The sophomore Lily Sobe turned in a standout performance, scoring 20 goals and dishing out 12 assists last season for the Lady Sandys, who advanced to the program's first ever regional final contest. She recorded five goals and two assists in the playoffs. Congrats, Lily. And now for the guys' side, and your finalists for the Male Soccer Player of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Male Soccer Player of the Year is Jaime Carrillo. 
of Palo Duro High School. The striker finished with 43 goals and 15 assists to lead the Dons to the fourth round of the Class 5A playoffs. In district, he netted 10 goals and 5 assists. Congrats, Jaime. And now it's time for the Comeback Award, presented by Amarillo Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. I'm beyond thrilled to recognize local athletes who have faced setbacks and persevered to success. At our practice, we strive for greatness every day, but sometimes we face obstacles that block our goals. If you have a winning spirit and drive to keep pushing forward, you can overcome anything. It is my honor to announce this year's Comeback Award Delaney Weaver raised her arms in victory, smiled, and looked to the cloudless sky as most athletes do after winning. The crowd had no idea of the journey Weaver had to endure before she could get back to the track and compete, ultimately ending with a gold medal inside Mike A. Myers Stadium. Prior to standing at the top of the medal stand, Weaver fell asleep while driving to the morning practice, crashed her vehicle, and suffered a fracture in her vertebrae being one of many she sustained with about a nine-month recovery plan. Congratulations, great job. You know, sometimes scoreboards and record books don't tell the entire story. And it's a team that doesn't win the title that everyone remembers. The Top Team Fan Favorite Award recognizes teams who exceeded expectations and uplifted their fans regardless of their final record. For this award, each community nominates and votes for the most inspiring team from their area. And now, the Northwest Texas Healthcare System Sports and Ortho Center's Top Team Fan Favorite Award. Here are your honorees. Here are your finalists. And the winner is... Despite starting the season in early August without the minimum number of students to compete, the Herd captured HISD's ninth state championship en route to capturing the first team tennis state championship for the Panhandle since 1996. Hereford had to defeat five of the top 15 teams in the state. Their final three matches were nail biters defeating number two Vernon, number six Kaufman, and finally Bourne in the state championship, all by a score of 10 to eight. Congratulations, great job. Hey guys, it's Aaron Rodgers, and I'll be handing off some football awards in just a bit. Maybe I'll be saying your name, so stick around to find out. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. All right, let's get some apps. Let's do it. It's as easy as that. Let us refill for you. Hey, you go, guys. Wow, that was so fast. Thank you Enjoy. so much. Yeah. Right, cheers, guys. Hey, I'll be right back. Okay. No one likes waiting in long lines or missing the big moments. Did I miss anything? No. That was quick. I know, right? Do you want a beer? Yeah. We're making it easier for you to get back to what you love without missing a single minute. Refill. Did I miss anything? Now, Laura, you know they say defense wins championships. I know you won't get any argument about that from our next presenter. But even if you did, I'm pretty sure you'd let him win that argument. Yeah, I'd sure stay out of his way. Also, those people haven't met you. But anyway, here to present the Defensive Football Player of the Year is T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt, the youngest in an NFL family dynasty, was drafted in the first round by the Steelers in 2017 and became the first rookie to start at linebacker for the black and gold in more than 30 years. He has earned three Pro Bowl selections, led the league in sacks in 2020, and is a two-time Defensive Player of the Year finalist. Presented by First Bank Southwest. Hey everybody, it's TJ Watt, giving some much deserved props to the defenders out there. We all know that the offense is the one everybody likes to talk about and read about during the season. But over the long haul, history looks back kindly on those who defend. Think about it. 
The heroes of the Alamo, they were defenders. The iconic and beloved lawyer Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, defender. Even one of the early super popular video games back in the 80s was called, you guessed it, Defender. And how would you describe a talented player on the other side of the ball? You call them offensive, like a bad smell or a horrendous outfit, like that uncle who always jokes weirdly at Christmas. So keep doing what you're doing out there on the field. People may go nuts for the quarterbacks today, but they'll always remember you defenders for years to come. Here are your honorees for the Defensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Defensive Football Player of the Year is... Amarillo's Eric Gray is your Panhandle Defensive Player of the Year after making the most of his eight games this past season. The combo lineman is being recruited on the offensive side of the ball. He recorded 20 tackles this season, including seven solo and five for loss. In the eight games played, he recorded three and a half sacks. The junior will be back next year to lead Amarillo. Congratulations to the Texas Panhandle Defensive Football Player of the Year. A big thanks to TJ Watt for helping us out with the defense. And before we move on to offense, I was thinking, you know, Desmond, if I could get you, mm -hmm. TJ, and our next presenter on my flag football team, yeah. I could go ahead and just plan the victory dinner before the season even started. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, man, I love to run routes for this guy. His accuracy and creativity as a signal caller make him a receiver's dream. So more of my flag football team later, but he is one of the best and has certainly carved out a place for his name in the record books. Here to present is legendary quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Super Bowl champion Aaron Rodgers holds the league's lowest career interception percentage and the highest single season passer rating in history. The nine time Pro Bowl selection was also named the NFL's most valuable player last season the third MVP trophy of his illustrious career. Presented by First Bank Southwest. Hey everybody, Aaron Rodgers here to hand out some awards to incredibly deserving high school football players. Of course that got me thinking about all the things I love about our sport. You know, one of the most underrated aspects of football, the terminology. I mean, we got the blitz, the bomb, the sack, wild card, we spike, we trap, we fly, we Hail Mary from time to time, those are fun. No offense to other sports, but while they dribble or bunt, we hit the hole and shoot the gap. They can't stand tall with a Statue of Liberty or transform a turnover into a touchdown with a fumble ruski. So what do you say, we get in victory formation as we salute some amazing athletes from the gridiron. Here are the honorees for the Offensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Texas Panhandle Offensive Player of the Year is... Hayes Hofstadler of Canadian High School. After rushing for more than 2,000 yards and leading Canadian High to a Class 3A Division II state title this past fall, Hayes Hofstadler is the Texas Panhandle Offensive Football Player of the Year. The senior standout racked up 147 yards on 23 carries in a thrilling title-clinching win over Franklin. Overall in the playoffs, Hubstedler amassed nearly 500 total rushing yards while averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Congratulations, Hayes. Imagine for a moment what it would be like to go through your day carrying around something that weighs the same as you do. Now imagine that weight isn't playing nice and is fighting you the whole time. It would get pretty exhausting pretty fast. Welcome to the life of a wrestler. Here to help us award these masters of the mat is freestyle Olympic champion, Kyle Snyder. Kyle Snyder, AKA 
Captain America in 2016 became the youngest Olympic gold medalist and world champion in American wrestling history. He helped Team USA win its first world championship in more than 20 years. He'll be repping the red, white, and blue again when he attempts to defend his freestyle Olympic gold in Tokyo. Hey everybody, Kyle Snyder here. If you want to have a long and successful wrestling career, you have to embrace a concept that is foreign to most Americans. I'm talking about kilograms. That measure of weight that school children and the rest of the world use with ease, but adults in the US can't seem to wrap their heads around. So if you already have a handle on it, you're ahead of the game. It's kind of like learning the language of your opponents. Here are your finalists for the Female Wrestler of the Year. And the Texas Panhandle Female Wrestler of the Year is Tatiana Garcia of Cap Rock High School. Garcia got her redemption over Frisco Independent Senior and 2020 state champion Tabitha Wood in the 119 pound state final to complete her undefeated season at 25 and 0. Congratulations, Tatiana. And now for the guys. Here are your finalists for the male wrestler of the year. And the Texas Panhandle male wrestler of the year is Branson Britton of Randall High School. The 182-pound athlete ended his season perfect, securing a 29-0 mark to go along with a gold medal, his second straight individual title in his second weight class after moving up from 170 pounds. Congratulations, Branson. Chipper Jones here. Let's see who really knocked it out of the park this year. Coming up right after this. Softball might be the most misnamed sport there is. First off, the ball isn't soft at all. Just ask anyone who's ever been hit by one. Secondly, pitchers routinely hurl it over 70 miles an hour, standing only 43 feet from home plate. So don't confuse softball for being soft. To present our next set of awards, here's legendary pitcher Jenny Finch. An icon of the diamond, Jenny Finch caught the nation's attention pitching the University of Arizona to a national championship in 2001. Three years later, she was on the world stage, helping lead Team USA to the gold medal at the Athens Olympics. She would later collect a silver medal in Beijing and go on to boast an outstanding pro career on her way to the National Softball Hall of Fame. Hey everybody, Jenny Finch here with a question for all you softball players out there. Why can't they make a great sports movie about women's softball? Is it really that hard? I mean, our smaller sphered cousin baseball has tons of them. Sure, there is that comedy all-stars, but that's really more about the parents than it is about the players. Even a league of their own is about women's baseball where there is no crying, not softball. It makes no sense. Our sport provides plenty of drama, I don't know about you, but I've met some unforgettable characters in and around the diamond. And you have a built-in audience dying to see their sport up on the silver screen. So for any of you softball players out there with a mile-wide creative streak, start gathering some fun stories, start putting together some characters, and getting them down on paper. And let's see if we can make a movie about the greatest sport in the world, softball. And while we wait for that, Let's give out some awards. Here are your honorees for the Softball Player of the Year.
And the finalists are... And the Texas Panhandle Softball Player of the Year is... J.C. Adams of Bushland High School. J.C. Adams sent a shot over the fence to break the all-time team state home run record of 83 in the regional quarterfinal round of the playoffs. The Bushland Junior is an intense player who's looking to send the ball to the moon every time she approached the plate. Congratulations, J.C. In 1936, Major League Baseball became the first professional sport in North America to establish a Hall of Fame as a way to remember the grace of the game from every generation. Induction to the Hall is seen as the highest honor of an extraordinary player's remarkable career. To present our baseball awards is first ballot Hall of Famer, Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones was selected by the Atlanta Braves as the number one overall pick in 1990 and went on to become a mainstay in a Braves dynasty that claimed 11 consecutive division crowns and a World Series title. He captured two Silver Slugger awards and was the National League MVP in 1999. Hey everybody, can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this presentation to all you hardworking baseball players out there. I also want to say how impressed I am at all the stats you guys use these days. Y'all have a measure for everything. When I was playing, we didn't talk much about range factors or wins above replacement or bequeath runner scored. Heck, we didn't even know what bequeath was. The only time we ever talked about launch angle was if we happened to see the space shuttle taking off. And exit velocity was how fast the fans left after big locks. But by embracing all the statistical analysis, you're getting new insights into this great game. You're also probably getting a lot better scores on your math tests, so keep up the good work. And don't let your Babbitt affect your Woba, whatever that means. Here are your honorees for the Baseball Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Texas Panhandle Baseball Player of the Year is Tristan Curlis. Amarillo High's ace on the mound and most dominating performer at the plate led the Sandys to the state semifinals for the first time since 2016. Tristan Curlis had a 10-1 record on the mound and put together championship-level performances during the Sandy playoff run. Congratulations, Tristan. Many of the athletes featured tonight will continue their athletic careers in college. But our next presenter's talents were so prodigious that the professional leagues couldn't wait. To hand out our basketball awards, we have the big ticket himself, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, dubbed Mr. Basketball USA in 1995, was the first player drafted by the NBA straight out of high school in more than 20 years. This 15-time All-Star earned MVP and Defensive Player of the Year honors and an Olympic gold medal. Here he is, the big ticket himself. Hey, KG here. I know all you girls and guys have worked really hard in high school. I've totally earned all the props and recognition you're getting. But no matter how long you play this game, know one thing they will never teach you at any point along the way is how to give out awards. I tell you right now, it's not easy. Scrape that our country is a melting pot and we have people from all over. But that also means that the names can be pronounced a million different ways. So be kind to the big ticket, if you will. If I accidentally uh, mispronounce your name or if I don't get your name right perfectly, I mean, no disrespect. Uh, I have just seen these winners' names, and I'm going to try my best, OK? So let's get to it. Here are your finalists for the Female Basketball Player of the Year. Texas Panhandle Female Basketball Player of the Year is Chloe Callahan. 
Chloe Callahan, the Panhandle Female Basketball Player of the Year, closed out her career in epic fashion. There were many memorable parts of Callahan's senior campaign, which closed out a career that will be known as one of the best to ever come through Canyon High School. The North Texas commit averaged 13 points per game this season and scored 17 in the Class 4A state championship game. Congratulations, Chloe. And now for the ballers on the guy side. Here are your finalists for the male basketball player of the year. And the male basketball player of the year for the Texas Panhandle is Brendan Housen from Amarillo High School. As the catalyst for an Amarillo team that reached the Class 5A semifinals, Brandon Housen is this year's Texas Panhandle Boys Basketball Player of the Year. With more than 1,400 career points and still another year of high school to go, Housen is already the career scoring leader in the 132-year history of Amarillo High School. Congratulations, Brandon. Courage means getting up after you've been knocked down. Failure is refusing to get up. Courage is getting up and doing something about it. Courage means being uncomfortable and being okay with that. Be willing to take a chance and maybe go against the flow. To put, put yourself on the line for something. I was always taught that courage means doing the right thing when no one's looking. Courage means stepping out of your comfort zone. Courage means you're fearless. Courage means facing your fears and saying, I'm not scared of you. Courage means doing the right thing all the time, not just when people are watching. Courage can mean that you're just not afraid to make mistakes. Not the absence of fear, but, but I think confronting your fears. One of my favorite quotes is by Mary Ann Ratmaker. It says, courage does not always roar. Some days, courage is the little voice that says, I'll try again tomorrow. The Courage Award, presented by United Supermarkets. Hi, I'm Sydney Hopper, president of United Supermarkets. We operate United Supermarkets, Market Street, and Amigo stores. Congratulations on being selected for the Texas High School Sports Awards. Lessons learned from sports translate into life each and every day. At our company, our mission statement is ultimate service, superior performance, and positive impact. I have no doubt with all the challenges and obstacles you overcame this year to achieve this award that you achieved all of these. Have a great day, thank you. Courage truly means so many things. Overcoming challenges is the very essence of sports. But there are times when adversity comes after the whistles have blown and the horns have sounded, and it's devastating. The Courage Award is given to an athlete who has faced tremendous hardship and through their strength and tenacity, were able to rise above it. In 2018, a traumatic on-field leg injury threatened to end Alex Smith's professional football career and his life. After 17 surgeries, a lethal infection, and two years of grueling rehab, he stepped back into the huddle to help lead the Washington football team to an improbable playoff berth. Here to honor our recipient and present the 2021 Courage Award is a man who is no stranger to hardship himself, 2020 NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Alex Smith. There are a lot of ways to define courage. For me, courage is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. And the grace exhibited by our Courage Award winner is something to behold. Courage can be found overcoming a sudden and traumatic event or conquering a lifelong condition in ways the rest of us can't even imagine. What makes this athlete truly amazing is that they shared their very difficult, very personal story in order to help the next person who has the same brutal hill to climb. They found a way to turn courage into something shared something inspiring, something beautiful. And the recipient of the Courage Award for the Texas Panhandle is Jesus Sanchez. Jesus Sanchez lost his father to a farming accident at six years old while his brother went to prison in 2017. His mother cannot work or drive, but it didn't stop him from getting to class and excelling in cross country and tennis. 
Congratulations, Jesus. Hey, high school sports fans, it's the Big Aristotle here to present some of the biggest awards of the night. So stick around. I've been preparing all week. I really hope I make Miss Swan proud. That's my fourth grade teacher. Definitely don't want to end up in detention again. Team of the Year, presented by Amarillo Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. To be the best team, you must possess key attributes. Communication, passion, sportsmanship, and strength. At our office, we must work together seamlessly to maximize treatment for our patients. This award recognizes the students, coaches, and administrators who have demonstrated superior teamwork and a winning record. It is with great pleasure that we honor the team of the year, a team that aimed for and achieved greatness. We've seen so many outstanding individual achievements in all different sports from this past school year. But now we focus on the heart of high school athletics, yeah. the team. And a crucial ingredient for success at any level, the coach. Mm -hmm. And to our awards for the best team and best coach, please welcome someone who is no stranger to success, legendary coach, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer has found success at every stop of his coaching career, including three national championships. He's the winner of multiple National Coach of the Year awards, and this fall, he'll make his NFL debut as head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi guys, we know that good coaches and teams of this world are judged by the wins and losses. But we all know that there's a lot more behind the scenes. Strategy, teaching, training, and a lot of pushing. But a coach excels when his or her team truly comes together as one. And you know it doesn't matter what sport you play, there really is nothing like being part of an exceptional team. It's never easy, of course. Nothing worthwhile ever is. The hours and hours of practice, the growth of a unit, going through all the ups and downs, the highs and lows of a season together. When you become a great team, a special bond forms between the players, the coaches, and the support staff. That's like nothing else I've ever felt. Yes, there's some magic needed to make great coaches and great teams, but don't take this old coach's word for it. Let's hear from some athletes who know a thing or two about winning. A good teammate accepts you as you are, yet challenges you to become even better because they see the best in you. A good teammate is someone who wants the same amount of success for you as they do themselves. A good teammate is unselfish. Somebody who always um, stays positive. The way you grow, uh, the way your game grows, the way your IQ grows, uh, a lot of times is, is off the basis of how your coach. A good coach is consistent. A good coach is someone that can motivate you to do things that your mind doesn't even think you can do. Good coaches understand that their role is not just to, to coach, but to teach, to inspire, and motivate an athlete. Okay guys, they really did say it best, but now let's give out some awards to some who've proven they know what it takes to come together as a team and bring home the wins. Here are your finalists for the team of the year. And the Texas Panhandle team of the year is Panhandle High School girls track and field team. Corby Maurer knew this group was special, telling his athletes all they needed to do was, and I quote, win eight races, and you have a chance to win it all, end quote. After six events, including the 1600 meter relay to close out the meet, the Pantherettes knew they had scored 74 points and went on to claim the team title for the first time since 1967. Congratulations, ladies. Very impressive season. Coach of the Year, presented by the U.S. Army. On behalf of the United States Army and the Amarillo Community, 
recruiting station, we want to first say congratulations to all these outstanding coaches. The U.S. Army understands the dedication and commitment all of you have made to achieve such high accomplishments as well as mentor young men and women in your sport. As coaches, you have mentored America's youth on what it takes to compete at the highest levels. We share that same passion as we continually strive to perfect our craft every day. At the end of the day, what has driven all of us to perfection is hard work, perseverance, leadership, and the winning spirit. We believe it is better to fight for something than live for nothing. Army strong. Now for the coach of the year. And the finalists for the coach of the year are And the Texas Panhandle Coach of the Year is Corby Maurer of Panhandle High School. In his second year at the helm of the Panhandle girls track and field team, Corby Maurer helped guide the Pantherettes to the program's first team title since 1967. The veteran coach found a good mix of relay squads while helped Panhandle secure crucial points and ensured he and his athletes would celebrate as the top 2A team in the state. Congratulations, Coach. Excellent job. Female Athlete of the Year, presented by Happy State Bank. Hello and welcome to the Panhandle Athlete of the Year celebration. Happy State Bank is excited to once again be the sponsor of this event that honors the top high school athletes of the year. You are truly the best of the best and we're so proud of you and the example that you've been to us both on and off the field and the court. So on behalf of the bank, we're honored to congratulate you. It's been a privilege to cheer you on this year. Congratulations. All right, guys, the moment we have all been waiting for. It's time to reveal the top male and female athletes of the year. Yes. These are exemplary athletes who have stolen the spotlight, dominated the season, and shown what it means to be unstoppable. To give us a helping hand with the Female Athlete of the Year is the all-time assist leader in WNBA history, the great Sue Bird. Sue Bird has been a basketball superstar for more than 25 years. She earned the Naismith College Player of the Year and a three-time Nancy Lieberman Award winner. Bird was the number one pick of the 2002 WNBA Draft, an 11-time All-Star, two NCAA championships, four WNBA crowns, four Olympic gold medals, four FIBA World Cup titles, plus a dozen or so International League titles. Hey everybody, Sue Bird here. We've arrived at my favorite part of the show. Female Athlete of the Year brings together the best of the best, all in one award. It's kind of like that scene in Endgame when all the female heroes assemble, only instead of lasers, swords, and tricked out suits, you gals have sports equipment. But you get the idea. The point is you have all excelled in your individual sports. You have all overcome obstacles standing between you and success and you all have earned our lasting admirations. So really, there is no downside here. Just one of you gets a little bit more of an upside. But you all leave tonight winners. All right, let's meet our finalists for Female Athlete of the Year. Chloe Callahan of Canyon High School. Kyla Kane of Wellington High School. Macklin Land of Panhandle High School. And the Texas Panhandle Female Athlete of the Year is Macklin Land of Panhandle High School. A crucial part of the Panhandle girls track and field team, which earned the program's first team title since 1967. Macklin Land was a crucial cog on the relays and was part of the Pantherettes squad that advanced to the 2A state girls basketball tournament. Congratulations, Macklin. Male Athlete of the Year, presented by Amarillo Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. I'm so excited to recognize this year's top male athlete. Being a great athlete is more than winning games. It takes discipline, courage, passion, and being a great team player. These athletes are a fundamental part of the outstanding community spirit, and it's with great pride to recognize the Male Athlete of the Year. Congratulations to all our athletes. 
Always persevere on your path to greatness. Now let's meet the contenders for Male Athlete of the Year. With so much incredible talent on display, we needed somebody of equal stature. So our final presenter of the night needs no introduction. Yeah, but we're gonna give him one anyway, because if we don't, I know he'll call us out and he'll say, Hey, there's uh, Rutledge, why, why did you throw the deal some love? Wow. So here to present our final award of the night, the one and only Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, the big Aristotle himself, is feared by opponents and loved by millions. Shaq's combination of size, speed, and strength led to four NBA championship rings, an MVP title, 15 All-Star Game appearances, an Olympic gold medal, and a first ballot invite to the Hall of Fame. What's up everybody, Diesel in the house, representing for all the major athletes out there in high school. It's time to give out the best male athlete award. Anytime somebody wants to put the word best next to your name, that is a major sign of respect. It means they know you do hard work to be great, but also you pay attention to detail. It means you rise to the occasion when your team really needs it. It means you make your parents proud. So let's give it up for the male athletes who are vying for the title of the best. And the finalists for the Male Athlete of the Year are... Samuel Ashley of Canyon High School, Tristan Curlis of Amarillo High School, Heston Marshall of Wheeler High School. And the Texas Panhandle Male Athlete of the Year is Heston Marshall of Wheeler High School. The football and track and field standout Heston Marshall showed out by securing gold in the 400 and silver in the 200 while running for over 1,800 yards, throwing for 891 yards and finishing with a combined 34 touchdowns. On defense, he recorded 88 tackles, five sacks, and chipped in three defensive scores. In four years, he ran for 6,373 yards on the ground. Congratulations, Heston. What a great night. We have had so much fun celebrating your accomplishments. And we want to thank all the parents, guardians, teachers, and role models who have helped these amazing young adults get to where they are today. You're all so important. Exactly. And to all the athletes, coaches, and winners, congratulations. Yes. Until next year, that's a wrap. Yes. <laughs>I'd give to my high school self would be don't sweat the small stuff. I would tell my high school self to take time and enjoy the little things. High school flies by and before you know it you will be an adult. <laughs> so have fun and enjoy the time with your friends and family. Well there's a couple things. I think one would to tell myself to be yourself and a lot of times that's a lot easier said than done but I know looking back I was like every other high school kid trying to figure things out you know seeing what your friends are doing seeing what your family's doing trying to see where you fit in and I think a lot of times um, as kids you know we don't have the confidence to just be who we are only surround yourself with people that you respect that you love that love you back that support you you've got to have positive enforcement in every way around you. Continue to be a leader and not a follower. Continue to do right things in the community, in schools, uh, around other student athletes. It's supposed to be fun. Work hard, put everything into it, but make sure that you have joy when you compete. It's not about the outcome, it's about competing with all of your heart for something that you love. The outcome, the results will take care of themselves if you do that. So make sure you have fun, have fun with your team, rejoice in each other, rejoice in your talent, and just go for it. I think I would tell her first and foremost to enjoy the process and have fun and stay present in the moment. Um, and then I would say to challenge herself and to kind of run towards her fears and get uncomfortable. I think that that's where um, people learn and grow the most is making mistakes, um, taking advantage of the mistakes as an opportunity and learning from them. My advice would be make the most of your high school experience. How you do that, it's about people, it's about relationships. Be yourself and be a leader. 
before beginning. Babe.